What do we got? Man, there were, there were a lot of questions on converters. Maybe we, since, since, uh, since we just did some of that. So, you like know, what? again, sort of like where in the arc of your career, does it make sense to spend more money? Um, the, yeah. Can you just touch on 80 to DA converters? Eli asks, uh, when and, uh, when and why would you want better converters, Burl, Hilo, et cetera? Um, and then Kevin asks, is the Grace 905S USB digital audio converter acceptable? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, that's what like I have. That uh, that's my that's my my last stack in my chain. So that's how I'm monitoring back. I have the Hilo on my in and output um, bus for my mix bus and for recording and hardware inserts. I have the Lynx Aurora, uh, which is uh, 16 in and out and sounds fucking great. It sounds clean. I'm constantly stacking, uh, you know, a bunch of tube gear on things, and it's just clearer than I can imagine. Uh, ins and outs being where in the arc that's kind of what we we're talking about that's unanswerable in a sense because yeah. it's it's purely financial you could be at the beginning yeah. of your career and someone's investing thirty thousand dollars into you and that's not an uh you know an obstacle where, where in the budget probably yeah where in the budget and, and what you're doing too i i think yes. there is something where if you're a songwriter and and it inspires you to not have the greatest converters but instead have a profit six and that's your three thousand yes. dollar trade-off Get the yes. profit. Let's, I mean, let's you know. separate it to two to two positions, even though there's way more in between. Yep, the extremes, starters and finishers. If yep. you're a, a, a music, uh, a songwriter, a producer, a beat maker that's starting an idea and you intend to pass it off to a finisher, whether that's a mixer, additional producer, executive producer, wherever the finisher um, pre-mastering, let's, let's say pre-mastering, uh, we could add mastering to this conversation as well, but let's stick between producer and mix engineer, uh, develop relationships with those people. And I would say if you are a starter, uh, this matters slightly less in the beginning. And yeah. then if you're a finisher, it is the most important part. Yeah. And those are the two extremes. Find where you are at in your circumstance on the spectrum we cannot answer that for anybody. But if you're trying to be a mixer and trying to um, kind of my career trajectory, um, I started out with uh, some Apogee Rosettas uh, back in the day when they were kind of affordable. Um, my first kind of HD system. I think I bypassed the 192s because I hated Avid soft uh, hardware. Um, those, uh, those Rosettas sound terrible. Uh, I thought that they were good because Apogee branding was so great. Uh, not cool waste waste of money um got rid of those and got got links um pretty much and i got links because of the connectivity with pro tools so the the way that they read um it looks like an hgio so software to hardware compatibility is on point hardware inserts have no delay you don't have to calibrate anything like it just works uh, they have an hd card and their thunderbolt cards are fast then it's just a, a modern approach to clear uh, clear conversion. Um, so then you're a producer, like we said last week, get yourself an Apollo, make a beat. I'd be mindful of how much you're recording through that Apollo twin and stacking. If you're completely synthetic and you're making beats with samples and, 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 and drums that are pre-existingly recorded, uh, I think that that that's, that's a great way to become a starter. And I wouldn't say spend much more than that. Always know in the back of your head that you're going to pick better sounds through a better deck at the end before you're monitoring. And I think that's something that you can uh, aspire to have. But uh, on the opposite ends of the spectrum, I think that covers that. That's a good distinction, too. So a couple of people ask, what if you're a starter and a finisher? Um, it, it, it depends, you know, depends on all the factors. This is the part where it gets complicated. We really can't answer yeah. it for you. What is your budget? Where are you getting paid the most? What are you getting hired the most for? Are you getting paid to mix things, but you're trying to write more top line and lyrics? Are you mostly doing lots of sessions, but you're trying to work your way into becoming more of a finisher mixing engineer? It, yeah. it, all of those things. And, and then what is your budget? How much are you getting paid for records? Yeah. Uh, you know, all, all those things. It, it changes the conversation and how much are, if you're a starter, how much are you actually recording things? Like you said, when you, if you have cheaper converters and preamps and mics and things like that, and you're doing lots and lots of actual recording, either recording keyboards, recording yeah. mics, recording acoustic instruments, you probably want to spend more money investing in the yes. hardware that's going to make that pipe, that, those, that it's series really of It's really an pipes. assessment of what your priorities are going to be. And it also brings me to a thought that constantly having uh, internally and externally with people like you and, and, and my conversations crew, like, I don't, 
I don't see people up until recently uh, holding the engineer um, role and career uh, as a coveted position in the record making process. Every everybody wants to be a producer. Everyone's like wants that P R O D dot credit. You know, like yeah. produced by because it, it happened on SoundCloud where producers became artists and then. There's the producer of the year, a uh, Grammy award. And there's no engineer of the year. There's best engineered record, but everyone involved on the recording of that gets it. It's not specific. So we don't kind of have this elevated view of what a, a, a finisher or a mixer even looks like. So I'm not sure that people at the beginning even think that this is a possibility, something they want to become. There's very few. And recording engineers, you got to really have a love for old Beatles records to want to um, be a recording engineer at this point because you're, you're winding up sitting in a room recording vocals mostly to two tracks. And, um, you know, unless you're working on more independent, uh, like uh, organic live records, which can be great, uh, just a, a, a more of a niche in the world that we, I think, exist in. Uh, that's something to, to be determined along the way. And gear plays a part in that. What story do you want to tell about yourself in the room when clients come in? Do you want to have an MPC 3000 and uh, an Apollo twin is a, is a version of a beat maker. And then there's, uh, you know, the beat maker that has a drum kit set up um, live bass through an amp peg tube amp. And like you have all the instruments, the sound stations like Brian, Eno refers to them also in the room as well as the MPC. You might also want, uh, you know, high end converters, and that you're telling a story with the gear to a to a degree of what you're what you're interested in. But I want to really pinpoint the idea that if you want, and this is again from from my perspective as a I came out the other side of being a producer and an engineer and a songwriter and a beat maker and kind of yeah. all the things. To I am a mix engineer now, ninety eight percent of the time. Converters should have been a higher consideration earlier on for me because I'm determining that final. Uh, sound and people with cheaper converters and don't really care about sonics as much, they come to me for that, right? So it's a positioning in, um, you know, in your role that you should take seriously and, and then realize that the investment is necessary for that. Yeah, I think it, it, th those are great thoughts. And the, the short answer is you, it depends for everybody and roles are going to continue to change too. And what people, um, you know, what, what role a person has, you may start out, like you said, as a producer and become a mix engineer, you might become mm -hmm. a Skrillex type person where you're actually mastering it. And yet he's doing it on in, in the boxes. He's not doing lots of external recordings. Yep. I, you know, and when he probably, does, he goes to a studio when he, he, he does, he goes to a proper studio. So, yeah. and I, I, I don't know what setup Sonny has, but, um, I would imagine he's not running around with, all of the best, most expensive converters everywhere he goes that are his setup. He's does some things in the box. I know he did a lot of the stuff mixing on headphones. I mean, look, the, 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 the answer is it's going to be specific to you, but hopefully a bunch of those yeah, thoughts help. 